Welcome to worship for St. P Peter ELCA Lutheran Church in Sheboygan. I'm guest pastoring today. I'm Chaplain Elizabeth Jager. I'm a chaplain at Great Lakes Hospice in Glendale, and I travel around to various nursing homes and um, work with people who are at the end of life. Um, if you are a member of St. Peter, um, you can look at your email for announcements and news and um, find out more about what's going on. Um, and if you're not a member, um, you can also look too. Um, please note that um, if you're online, you're welcome. And um, we do have worship at 8.30 and 9.30. One is indoors and one is outdoors um, on Sunday mornings. Um, we continue with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pause for a few moments of silent confession and conversation with God. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and love us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Today's New Testament reading comes from Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, the sixth chapter. And this is the, the passage which I'm going to be preaching on today. Paul writes, Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything to stand firm, Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all of the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. 
The Holy Gospel for this Sunday comes from the Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you, that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us turn to God in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. In the first Avengers movie, when the team is about to face an army of extraterrestrial shapeshifters unleashed by Thor's brother Loki upon Earth, Captain America enters a room and says to Black Widow and Hawkeye, it's time to go. Black Widow says, go where? Cap answers, I'll tell you on the way, and asks her, can you fly one of those jets? Hawkeye responds, I can. Cap asks, got a suit? Then suit up. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, many of the superheroes and heroines suit up before they to face their enemies, especially those like Black Widow, Hawkeye, and yes, Iron Man, who don't have special powers on their own. They depend upon their suits to give them an edge in the fight. In today's portion of his letter to the church at Ephesus, Paul urges Christ's followers to suit up, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power by putting on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. This armor is neither physical nor visible, but it serves as a protection against temptation and the devil. Today's passage is the rousing conclusion to Paul's entire letter to the church at Ephesus, calling believers to arms, where we are pitted against all the forces of evil. I am reminded of the battlefield speeches in many films like Braveheart, The Lord of the Rings, and The Chronicles of Narnia, where the commander rides horseback back and forth in front of his men, because there weren't really too many women back then, to strive to fortify their, his troops or their troops to face the battle ahead with determination courage, and perseverance. The suit of armor, these resources come not from God, or come not from us, but from God. As I think back on the Avengers, there is one scene where Tony Stark gets tossed out of a skyscraper in his street clothes, and as he flails through the air, slowly and slowlier, his Iron Man suit is placed upon him, bit by bit, piece by piece. In somewhat the same way, when we are in trouble, struggling with the evil forces in this world, God's spiritual armor will protect us, even as we fall. 
The armor of God is defensive. It protects us. It's not meant to be offensive. Evil exists in this world. Systemic racism, sexism, classism, hatred against the AG, LGBTQ plus community, and it, and it seeks to target God's people. It seeks to draw us into hate instead of into love. The suit that God gives us is not to be used to destroy others, but for the peaceful upbuilding of the saints and equips us to minister with those in need. Let's look closer at each of the pieces of this spiritual armor that God has equipped us with. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, Jesus said. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It is apt that the first piece of the armor of God is the belt of truth, because in Jesus we see the true path to God is love. Next, Put on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate is what protects our chest and within our heart and all of our vital organs. Righteousness is something that God gives us in Christ. We are not right with God on our own. When Jesus has control of our hearts, they are protected from attack, from evil. It is only when our hearts are tuned to God, that we are truly righteous. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. Once we know the truth, we need to walk out and share it with others. So when we put on the shoes of the gospel of peace, we are preparing to tell others the good news that we can have peace with God, become citizens of God's kingdom through believing in Jesus. Then take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. When we trust in Jesus and his love and his mercy protect us, they will even quench the fire of the evil that attacks us. The helmet of salvation. When we know that we are saved through faith in Jesus Christ, it protects our minds from turning to other false earthly sources of salvation, like money or fame or power. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. A sword, of course, is a weapon, which could be used offensively as well as defensively. God's Word is our strongest weapon against temptation. Think of when Satan was with Jesus out in the wilderness. Jesus used scripture to answer every trial. The tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, com command these stones to become loaves of bread. And then Jesus answered by quoting scripture. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus, again, quoted scripture. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. As Jesus' followers, we should look to Jesus' example by being well-versed in the verses of the Bible, and we will be prepared for all of the challenges and temptations we will need to face. Whenever you feel overwhelmed or challenged or tested by life's choices and don't know how to fight back, remember to suit up in the armor of God. It isn't visible like Iron Man's armor, but it is sure to protect you and keep you from falling to your doom. Amen. 
Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We turn to the words of the Apostles' Creed. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God of courage, bless all leaders of your church. Especially today, we lift up Pastor Kristen and also our bishop, Bishop Paul. Make them ready to proclaim the gospel of peace and strengthen them to preach your loving word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, bless all who seek justice between nations and peoples. Give guidance to bridge builders, heal divisions, and inspire cooperation in times of crisis, disaster, and war. Today, we especially lift up the people of Afghanistan and the people of Haiti. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless all who are in need. Accompany all who are lonely and feeling abandoned and remind them of your abiding presence. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited and open us to their cries. Lord, we pray for all who struggle against this new Delta variant of COVID-19, and we ask you would especially be with first-line, front-line workers who have to face this challenge once again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of change, bless our transitions. Guide all who are embarking on new stages in life, such as a new job, new school, or new community. Be with those who are planning to go back to in-person learning for the first time in months. Sustain enduring friendships and kindle new relationships and interests. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, Comfort all who mourn the deaths of their beloved ones. Renew our confidence in your promise of resurrection and life in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you at home would like to pause the video here and go and get some bread and wine or crackers and grape juice or whatever you have um, to have Holy Communion, um, please do so and then return and we will continue with Holy Communion. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus gave bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Let us together pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may take whatever bread that you might have. This is the body of Christ 
given for you. You will take whatever wine you have. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and grace. Amen. Let us bless our God, praise and thanks to you. May God, creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. I've enjoyed being with you here today, and I hope you'll come back to watch St. Peter again or, or join us on Geely Avenue. Have a great day.